Hello students, I am Shulita Shu will come with the all the subject topics in medical, pharmacy and life science one by one, medicine form only for you. So guys, Shuli Dash is welcoming you at the Pharmacy and Medical Crash Course Division in the Knowledge Club Online. In this course, we will learn about the basics of diet, nutrition, immune system and immunity. Don't skip any lecture or any episodes because if you skip any lecture, you can miss a valuable tip in between lecture. So stay tuned up to end. Now come to the point, the nutrition. Nutrition, the assimilation by living organisms of food materials that enable them to grow, maintain themselves and reproduce. Food serves multiple functions in most living organisms. For example, it provides materials that are metabolized to supply the energy required for the absorption and translocation of nutrients for the synthesis of cell materials, for movement and locomotion, for excretion of waste products and for all other activities of the organism. Food also provides materials from which all the structural and catalytic components of the living cell can be assembled. Living organisms differ in the particular substances that they require as food in the manner in which they synthesize food substances or obtain them from the surrounding environment and in the functions that these substances carry out in their cells. Nevertheless, general patterns can be discerned in the nutritional process throughout the living world and in the types of nutrients that are required to sustain life. Nutrients Some precursors that are the substances from which other substances are formed of cell materials can be synthesized by the cell from other materials while others must be supplied in foods. All the inorganic materials required for growth together with an assortment of organic compounds. Those number may vary from 1 to 30 or more depending on the organism fall into the latter category although organisms are able to synthesize non-essential nutrients such nutrients are frequently utilized directly if present in food, thereby saving the organism the need to expend the energy required to synthesize them. What are the inorganic nutrients? A number of inorganic elements or minerals are essential for the growth of living things. Boron, for example, have been demonstrated to be required for the growth of many perhaps all higher plants but that has not been implicated as an essential element in the nutrition of either microorganisms or animals. Trace compounds of fluorine as fluoride are certainly beneficial and perhaps essential for proper tooth formation in higher animals. Similarly, iodine as iodide is required in animals for formation of thyroxine, the active component of an important regulatory hormone. Silicon as silicate is a prominent component of the outer skeletons of diatomaceous protozoans and similar organisms and is required in them for normal growth. In higher animals, the requirement for silicon is much smaller. A less obvious example of a specialized minerals requirement is provided by calcium, which is required by higher animals in comparatively large amounts because it is a major component of bone and eggshells in birds. For other organisms, calcium is an essential nutrient but only as a trace element. Mineral elements in wide variety are present in trace amounts in almost all foodstuffs. It cannot be assumed that the non-essential minerals elements 
play no useful role in metabolism. Important antagonistic relationships between certain mineral nutrients are also unknown. A large excess of rubidium, for example, interferes with the utilization of potassium in the some lactic acid bacteria. Zinc can interfere with manganese utilization in the same organism. In animal nutrition, excessive molybdenum or zinc, by the way, both are essential minerals, but interferes with the utilization of copper and other essential minerals. And in higher plants, excessive zinc can lead to a disorder and is known as iron chlorosis. A proper nutrient growth media for microorganisms and plants or diets for animals therefore require not only that the essential mineral elements be provided in sufficient amounts but also that they be used in the proper ratios to each other. Now come to the point organic nutrients. The organic nutrients are the necessary building blocks of various cell components that certain organisms cannot synthesize and therefore must obtain performed. These compounds include carbohydrates, protein and lipids. Other organic nutrients include the vitamins which are required in small amounts because of either the catalytic role or the regulatory role they play in metabolism. What are carbohydrates? Quantitatively, the most important of nutrients are the carbohydrates synthesized by plants since they provide most of the energy utilized by the animal kingdom. Mature fruit is rich in sugars that attract birds and other small animals. The seed coats in the fruit survive their rapid passage through the gut of these animals who thus scatter widely the still viable seeds of the plant. Sucrose in particular also accumulates in the stems of sugarcane and in the roots of the sugar beet, serving as an energy reserve for each plant. Both are used for the industrial production of table sugar. Dietary sugars include monosaccharides which contain one sugar, the glucose unit and disaccharides which are made up of two sugars units lie linked together. In order to be utilized by an organism, all complex carbohydrates must be broken down into simple sugars, which in most cases are rapidly digested and absorbed. For example, if in the freely soluble disaccharide sucrose must first be hydrolyzed to glucose and fructose by a specific enzyme, sucrase. Newborn piglets do not secrete this enzyme, therefore cannot make use of sucrose. Conversely, the disaccharide lactose is rapidly hydrolyzed by newborn animals, but most species, even some humans, stop secreting the enzyme lactase after weaning. This is understandable since lactose occurs naturally only in milk which an animal usually will not encounter again after its suckling period. The major storage carbohydrate in plants is starch is a polysaccharide formed from the condensation of several glucose units, primarily through linkages that are rapidly broken down by digestive enzymes in microorganisms as well as in higher animals. However, different plant starches vary in the cross linkages between these basic chains and this variation can result in more compact molecules that are resistant to digestion. One of the major effects of cooking is the starch granules soil with absorbed water and become more easily digestible. Surprisingly, even members of the cat family which would not encounter starch in their natural carnivorous diet can utilize it quite efficiently when it is finely ground. Commercially, dry cat foods may contain 20% or more starch. Plant cell walls are constructed principally from cellulose. 
Cellulose is like starch in that it is made from condensed glucose units, but a different type of linkage between them units allows the chains to lie in flat planes and vertebrates have no enzymes to digest this linkage. However, herbivora species have gastrointestinal systems that allow for the bacterial fermentation of cellulose either in the fore stomach, the rumen or hindgut, which enables the animals to benefit from the metabolites of cellulose, principally short chain fatty acids. Other polysaccharides in plant cell worlds include pectins and hemicellulose which have a mixture of sugars such as xylose and arabinose upon hydrolysis. These sugars also are fermented by bacteria but are not broken down and digested by animal enzymes. Rigid plant structures contain lignin, a phenolic polymer that is impervious to digestion by both animals and bacteria. Considered together, these materials make up what is called dietary fiber. Now come to the point the lipids, the fats and oils. Another form in which some plants store energy in their seeds is fat, commonly called oil, in its liquid form. In animals, fats form the only large-scale energy store. Fats are a more concentrated energy source than carbohydrates. Oxidation yields roughly 9 and 4 kilocalories of energy per gram respectively. A fat consists of three fatty acids that is the hydrocarbon chain which are carboxylic acid group at one end attached to a glycerol backbone. The physical properties of fats depends on the fatty acids that they contain. All fats are liquid when present in living tissues. The fats of warm-blooded animals can of course have a higher freezing point than that of cold-blooded animals such as fish, snake, etc. Plants that survive frost must have a particularly low freezing point. In general, organisms lay down fat that has little or no excess of liquidity that is it has a freezing point near the maximum consistent with the organism's viability fatty acids differ from one another in two ways chain length and saturation chain length varies from 4 to 22 carbons with most fatty acids having 16 or 18 carbons the relatively low freezing point of a cow's butter fat results from its content of the 4 carbon short chain fatty acid, butyric acid. The longer the saturated chains, the higher the freezing points of the acids themselves and of the fat containing them. However, a greater effect of liquidity comes from the introduction of unsaturated or double bonds in the chain. More than one double bond, the polyunsaturation, makes it more difficult for fats to remain solid at room temperature. Animals generally either store absorbed fatty acids or oxidize them immediately as a source of energy. Particularly, fatty acids are needed for the production of phospholipids, which form an essential portion of cell membranes and nerve fibers and for the synthesis of certain hormones. Animals can synthesize their own fat from an excess of absorbed sugars, but they are limited in their ability to synthesize essential polyunsaturated fatty acids such as linoleic acid and linolenic acid. Thus, fatty acids are not just an alternative energy source, they are a vital dietary ingredient. The main vegetable oils are good sources of linoleic acid and most of these two contains a smaller proportion of linoleic acid. Cats have lost one of the principal enzymes used by other animals to convert linoleic acid to arachidonic acid which is needed for the synthesis of prostaglandins and other hormones. 
since arachidonic acid is not found in plants cats are obligate carnivores meaning that under natural conditions they must eat animal tissue in order to survive and reproduce now the next point the proteins the main organic materials in the working tissue of both plants and animals is protein large molecules containing chains of condensed units of some 20 different amino acids in animals protein food is digested to free amino acid before entering the bloodstream plants can synthesize their own amino acids which are required for protein production provided they have a source of nitrate or other simple nitrogenous compounds and sulfur needed for the synthesis of cysteine and methionine animals can also synthesize some amino acids from ammonium ions and carbohydrate metabolites however other cannot be synthesized and are therefore dietary essentials two amino acids cysteine and tyrosine can be synthesized only by metabolism of the essential amino acids methionine and phenylalanine respectively bacteria living in the rumen of ruminant animals can synthesize all the amino acids commonly present in protein and the true stomach of the ruminant will continue to receive microbial protein of reasonably good quality for digestion animals need protein to grow this requirement is roughly proportional to the growth rate and is reflected in the protein component of the milk secreted during the suckling period. For example, a piglet doubles its birth weight in 18 days and so's milk has protein as a level supplying 25% of the total energy. In contrast, humans take approximately 180 days to double their birth weight and breast milk contains protein at a level equivalent to only about 8% of the total energy. Young animals fed experimental diets completely lacking one essential amino acid all exhibit an immediate cessation of growth. Adults too required proteins in fairly large amounts more than would be needed to replace the small amounts of proteins lost by the body through urine faces and shed hair and skin it is true that animal tissues are continually turning over their proteins that is the hydrolyzing and desynthesizing them but this does not explain the additional protein requirement since the amino acids released are available for reuse it appears, however, that the enzymes available to metabolize excess amino acids do not inactivate completely when the body is short of protein, but instead remain at an idling rate. Normally, this is not a disadvantage since the diets of adult animals, including humans, contain more protein than is required to balance the idling losses. It also appears that in the course of evolution, the idling rates have become roughly adjusted to the normal protein intake. Thus, adult rodents living on a range of foods, some quite low in protein, need no more than 5% of their energy in the form of protein. In contrast, cats whose ancestral carnivorous diet has much higher in protein need some 20 percent in their diet to balance minimum losses now come to the point the vitamins what are the vitamins vitamins may be defined as organic substances that play a required catalytic role within the cell usually as components of coenzymes or other groups associated with enzymes and must be obtained in small amount through the diet. Vitamin requirements are specific for each organism and their deficiency may cause disease. Vitamin deficiencies in young animals usually result in growth failure. Various symptoms 
whose nature depends on the vitamin and eventual death. Although a vitamin is usually defined as an organic chemical, which an animal or human must obtain from the diet in very small amounts. This is not entirely true. Vitamin A does not occur in the plant kingdom, but the pigment carotin is universally present in green plants and most animals can split a molecule of carotin into two molecules of vitamin A. The exceptions are cats and probably other carnivores which under natural conditions have to obtain the performed vitamins by consuming the tissues of other animals. Niacin. Niacin too is not an absolute requirement since most animals, cats again being an exception, can synthesize it from the amino acid tryptophan if the latter is present in excess of its use protein synthesis. In the case of vitamin D is not a true vitamin. Most species do not need it in their diet because they obtain an adequate supply through the exposure of skin to sunlight which converts a sterile present in dermal tissue to vitamin D. The vitamin is subsequently metabolized to form a hormone that acts to control the absorption and utilization of calcium and phosphate. Animals such as rodents which normally have little exposure to sunlight and search for food mostly at night appear to have evolved so as to be independent of vitamin D so long as their intakes of calcium and phosphate are well balanced. In case of vitamin C, the ascorbic acid is an essential chemical in the tissues of all species but most can make it for the themselves so that for them it is not a vitamin. Presumably species that cannot synthesize vitamin C they include humans, guinea pigs and fruit eating bats had ancestors that lost the ability at a time when their diet was rich in ascorbic acid. Bacteria. Bacteria vary greatly in their needs for vitamin. Many are entirely independent of outside sources, but at the other extreme sum of the strains of bacteria found in milk, the example of lactobacillus have lost the ability to synthesize the B vitamins that they need. This property has made them useful for assaying extracts of foods for their vitamin B content. Indeed, many vitamins of this group were first discovered as growth factor for bacteria before being tested with animals and humans. The mixed bacterial flora in the guts of animals are on balance synthesizer of the B vitamins. Consequently, ruminant animals do not have to obtain them from an external source. On the other hand, the ability of hindgut fermenters to absorb vitamins from their large intestine is uncertain. Rats and rabbits whose nutritional needs have been studied intensively have been found to engage in coprophagy, the eating of fecal pellets that are vitamin rich as a result of bacterial fermentation in the hindgut. For one B vitamin, cobalamin or vitamin B12, bacterial fermentation is the only source. Though it can be obtained indirectly from the tissues or milk of animals that have obtained it themselves from bacteria. The generalization that the animal kingdom lives on the plant kingdom is therefore not the whole truth because animals really partly on bacteria for this one micronutrients. So students, we are at the ending position of this course. A warm thanks to all of you for making this course a valuable and successful one. Next, 
we are planning to make a course on the introduction of the reproductive system and asexual reproduction. Again, I am giving you a big thanks for your kind support. If you like this course, then definitely like, share and comment free. And obviously, if you have any doubt or question, don't hesitate to write me at the comment box. I shall rectify it and definitely I shall dismiss your doubt. I am coming with the next course very shortly. Till then, goodbye.